A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Welcome my dear lovely sisters to another weekly Iman Booster series by Ikna Sisters. Today is a continuation of the Dua series that was started last week. So as we heard last week, Dua is an essential aspect of a believer's life. Dua is the way we connect to our Creator, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One of the most beautiful aspects of our deen, my sisters, is that there is no intercession needed between Allah and His servants, us. Allah, the As-Sami, the Al-Basir, is always there, watching, listening, helping, and guiding us. Our magnificent Creator has a direct 24-hour hotline with us. Whenever we wish, we can address Him ask him put our needs in front of him and he will always be there no matter what this 24-hour hotline my dear sisters is dua the most comforting thing of all is that there will never be a message saying i am not available right now please leave a message or call back later no matter what when where Allah SWT will always turn his attention to his servant and not only listen but respond. In a beautiful ayah in Surah Baqarah, Allah himself confirms this. In ayah number 186, Allah SWT says, Bismillah <laughs> And when my servant asks you about me, indeed, I am near. I respond to the call of him who calls whenever he calls on to me. Let them then respond to me and believe in me so that they may follow the right way. Here Allah is so lovingly encouraging us to go to no one but Him, to pour our heart onto Him, to believe in His power and ability to solve our problems. I have personally experienced this phenomenon with myself and those around me that when we have poured our hearts to Allah in the most difficult situations, how not only has Allah listened and responded, and sent peace into our hearts, but also how he solved the problems in ways that we could have never imagined. So my dear sisters, we should never shy away from making dua. Make dua all the time, sitting, walking, laying, working, cleaning, cooking. Never break that direct hotline with Allah. Which takes us to our next, next aspect of dua. How does Allah answer our duas? No dua is ever wasted. No matter what the dua, its result is always positive for a believer. We learn this from a hadith that duas are answered by Allah in three ways. Abu Sa'ad al-Qudri responded, The Prophet wasallam said, There is no Muslim who supplicates to Allah without sin or cutting family ties in it that Allah will give him one of three answers. He will either hasten fulfillment of his dua or he will divert an evil from him similar to it or he will store it for him in the hereafter. Then the people said, in that case we will ask for more. And the Prophet wasallam said, Allah has even more. And this is from Musnad Ahmad. So we see that the dua is never wasted. We're always going to get one of three things, right? And the last thing is actually the best thing, which is that Allah will store it for us in the hereafter. Because on the day of judgment, when the believer sees the reward of the unanswered duas, they will say, I wish that none of my duas were answered in the dunya. So the benefits of duas not only are seen in our lives, rather they transcend to the next world immediately. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Sisters, we see that making dua is a win-win situation. We cannot go wrong. So why should we be stingy in making duas? That takes us to the next aspect of dua. What should we ask in our duas? Should we ask for good in the dunya only? Should we ask only for solutions to our problems? Should we ask for guidance and help in our everyday trials that we all want, all of us, each one of us has to go through because that's the nature of this life? 
obviously the answer to those questions is no there is so much more we can ask and Allah is so kind and merciful that he did not leave us alone to figure out the du'as he gives us the du'as that he knows we need to make subhanallah where does he teach these du'as well there are three sources through which Allah subhanahu ta'ala has taught us these du'as number one is the Quran so there's number one Quranic du'as number two masnoon du'as or du'as from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and number three the du'as of the righteous predecessors or the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these du'as also have been preserved with the will of allah and have reached us because of the benefit that they contain so we will look into all three of these inshallah so like we said we have a constant 24-hour hotline with Allah to talk to him in our own language in any way we want right but at the same time these three types of du'as should also be an integral part of our everyday lives let's look at these du'as and let's see why is it also important to know these du'as well when we look into these du'as we're going to see that they are so comprehensive in their wording they're full of divine wisdom they have multiple levels of benefit and they cover all aspects of our deen, dunya, and akhirah. Okay, so let's begin with the first one, which is Quranic du'as. We all know that the Quran is full of du'as made by various prophets and righteous believers, most of which begin with the words Rabbana, which means, O oh, our Lord. There are 40 Rabbanas in the Quran. Through these du'as, Allah is teaching us what to ask Him, how to ask Him. When we make these du'as, not only do we get the benefit of the du'a, but also get the reward of reciting a verse of the Qur'an. Again, sisters, a win-win situation. Let's look at um, the, fa the act of making istighfar. So, we know that we should be always asking Allah for forgiveness. Astaghfirullah, right? So, we can say astaghfirullah, or we can say in our own language, Oh Allah, forgive me for my shortcomings, right? But Allah subhanahu ta'ala teaches us in the Qur'an on how to make more comprehensive astaghfar if we look at surah al-imran ayah number 193 we find this dua bismillah rahman rahim rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyi'atina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar our lord so forgive us our sins and remove from us our misdeeds and cause us to die with the righteous now we look at this dua we see that it is such a comprehensive way of asking forgiveness this dua, when looked at carefully, covers a believer's past, present, and future sins. And in it, we are asking Allah to even take care of our time of death. So look at the benefits of making this dua versus just say, asking Allah, Oh Allah, forgive me. SubhanAllah, right? The next uh, type of duas are masnoon duas or duas from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. These were taught to us by him wasallam. And Prophet ﷺ was gifted by Allah with a very special quality, something that the scholars call Jami'ul Kalam, meaning speech that is concise but comprehensive with profound meaning. In other words, when we make Sunnah Du'as, we have said a lot but in a very few words, and which is why they are very easy to memorize. So Masnoon Du'as differ from Quranic Du'as as they cover the day-to-day -day lives of, uh, of, of a human being. For example, eating, sleeping, walking, dressing, looking into the mirror, mirror etc. So when we make these Du'as, we turn everyday mundane acts into worship. How amazing is our Deen sisters? Again, a win-win situation. Let's look at the simple Du'a after eating. The dua after eating is Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alna minal muslimin Meaning, all praise and thanks is for Allah who gave us food and drink and made us Muslims. In this dua, we are not only thanking Allah for the food but also the drink and right away it takes us into the akhirah, into the bigger picture. And we are saying, Oh Allah, by the way, thank you for making me a Muslim. So, that's the more important thing not the food and the drink right the food and the drink is a 
temporary necessity. But the fact that we are going to go into the next world and we need to be Muslim, those that submit unto Allah, is the bigger picture, the, the key here, right? So we see how these du'as take us to the next step, subhanAllah. Another du'a uh, from the sunnah is the du'a making, that we make during making wudu. And the du'a is, Allahumma ghfir li dhambi wa wassir li fi dari wa barik li fi rizqi. O oh Allah, forgive me and give me abundance and blessing in my house and grant me abundance in my livelihood. In this dua, we first ask Allah for forgiveness. So it ta it, it's going into the akhira, right? Forgiveness of our sins. But right away, also asks good in the dunya. Blessings in the home and risk. SubhanAllah. So we see, my dear sisters, that these duas have so many components and benefits that they outweigh just simple things that we might say to Allah, right? We see that the Quranic duas and the Masnoon duas are full of so many components. For example, they have zikr in them. It's remembering Allah. They have shukr and gratitude. There is asking good in the dunya. There is asking for forgiveness. There is preparation for the akhirah. Preparation for the time of death. So much more. Again, concise but comprehensive speech. Jami al kalam. Last, we have the was of the righteous salaf or the predecessors or the companions of the Prophet These du'as too were profound in content and words and it is important to mention them here. The du'a that I chose for this um, part is a du'a of uh, one of our beloved um, Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab and a beloved companion of the Prophet Um We all know about the amazing personality of Hazrat Umar and what he accomplished in his very few years as Khalifa and also about we know about the amazing connection that he had with Allah and the level of his Iman. So this is a dua that he used to recite after reciting the Quran. I'm going to recite it first and inshallah and then explain why it's so amazing. So the dua is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma rizuqni tafakkur wa tadabbur bima yatluhu lisani min kitabik wal fahma lahu wal ma'rifata bima'ani wa nadra fi ajaibi wal amala bithalik ma baqitu innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir Let's look at the meaning. O oh Allah, whatever my tongue recites from your book, grant me the favor to reflect and ponder over it. Bestow upon me the understanding of it. Bestow upon me the knowledge of its meaning and spirit and the vision to see its benefit. O oh Allah, grant me the favor to act according to its injunctions as long as I live. Certainly you have power over all things. Wow, what an amazing dua. Again, we see multiple levels of benefit that one is asking for it in for asking for in this dua on top of the reward of reciting it. On top of the reward of reciting the Quran. So we we all get benefit from reciting the Quran, but if we ask Allah to give us all of this after reciting the Quran, imagine the imagine the benefits. Last I was asked to discuss one of my favorite du'as from the Quran and or sunnah and why is it my favorite so sisters my favorite dua that i would like to share with you guys is the dua from the quran it's a rabbana dua that i've been making every day i recite this dua every day for the past nine years and the dua is from surah al-furqan ayah 74 which is Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyyatina qurrata ayun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama and the meaning is O oh my Lord grant unto us spouses and offspring who will be the comfort of our eyes and give us the grace to lead the righteous and the reason that this is my favorite dua is because we are living in a time when most Muslim families are not experiencing the tranquility, peace, and harmony that Allah had created the families for. I hear every day of marital discord and children and parents not getting along. So this dua is essential in getting those loving bonds between husbands and wives and children. 
and it reminds us of the purpose of parenting and of our very own existence to make ourselves and our children the leaders of the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is why sisters this is my favorite dua so dear sisters due to dua is the essence of ibadah and our lives are void of all good if they are void of duas whether personal or quranic or masnoon let not one moment of our lives pass without us remembering and asking our lord in the form of duas that is all for now until we meet again in another iman booster series wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh